Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with HyperDVG. This uh, part is mainly about hypervisor concepts. As you know, HyperDVG is a hypervisor based uh, debugger, so you need to know a little bit about hypervisors to see uh, how HyperDVG works internally, and we will also uh, look at the memory model that is used in HyperDVG and how we can uh, use uh, memory layouts. So we can modify uh, page tables and these are the things that we're gonna see in this part. First, we're gonna talk about virtualization technology or Intel VTX. Then we see some of the basic concepts in Intel VTX, so VMX root mode and VMX non root mode. Uh, then we see some of the primitives about page tables uh, in uh, Intel processors and we see how the translation of uh, page tables are performed in the processor. Then we see page table entry or PT command in HyperDBG. Uh, after that we go to the extended page table or second level page table which is called EPT in Intel. Then we see how we can uh, convert virtual to physical and physical to virtual addresses in HyperDBG, how we can read, write, search, or disassemble a, me uh, uh, a physical memory. And then uh, there is an uh, important section here about memory considerations. And we talk about safe and unsafe behaviors about HyperDVG and uh, some of the things that you should know before using HyperDVG. So let's get down to business. First uh, part is about virtualization technology and basic concepts in Intel processors about VTX. Virtual Machine Monitor or Virtual Machine Manager, VMM, uh, um, is the uh, is a software actually that um, acts as a host and it uh, fully controls the uh, the processor whenever uh, a VM VM exit or uh, uh, an event related to a virtual machine happen and then it's the responsibility of the VMM to handle it and uh mainly vmm perf ha has its ability to uh, con uh control uh, some resources physical memory interrupt manage uh, it's an interrupt manager and it also able and it's also able to handle io devices another term in intel uh, processor or uh, generally in uh in the virtual in the virtualization world is the guest software which uh, which is a uh, each uh, vm or each virtual machine is a guest software uh, this is the same concept about hi uh, hyperdvg as in hyperdvg uh, we uh, virtualize the system so uh, the vmm here is the hyperdvg debugger and the guest software is all the uh, all the operating system, uh, including its application, the drivers, and uh, these are called uh, guest software, but the HyperDVG acts as the VMM. Uh, we have VMX root mode operation and VMX non root uh, mode operation, and this is a very important term in terms of uh, virtualization. Uh, <clears throat> the, mo the most privileged uh, 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 mode uh, execution mode in uh, in a virtualized environment is VMX root operation. This is where where the actual VMM runs, and it's the actual uh, the HyperDVG core uh, is running. Uh, when, whenever you use the debugger, the HyperDVG core is running in VMX root mode, and then we have VMX non root operation, uh, which is uh, the entire operating system and its applications are running in VMX non-root operation. And we have VMX trans, uh, transitions, uh, the transitions between VMX root mode and VMX non-root mode is called VMX transitions. Then we have VM entries. Uh, VM entries is the process of transition from 
VMX uh, root mode to VMX non root mode, and we have VM exits whenever uh, certain events happen uh, in the target virtual core. Then a VM exit happens, and this is a transition from uh, VMX non root mode operation to VMX uh, root mode operation. I, I think uh, if you want to know more about uh, the virtualization technology, uh, virtualization technology, you might gonna see hypervisor from scratch tutorial because this tutorial is not mainly about the hypervisor. So it just I just wanna uh, uh, give uh, give an explanation about some some of the terms that are used for this tutorial so it's better to if you want to know more about these terms it's better to read uh, that tutorial so uh, another term that we have here is virtual machine control uh, structure or vmcs uh, vmcs is a structure that mainly controls the uh, uh, virtualized core it's the responsibility of the vmm to handle or to manage the structures and uh, the VMM uh, sets some bits or uh, unsets some of the bits and it completely changes the behavior of the uh, processor and uh, the, 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 this is uh, how a VMM can manage the target guest software or the target in terms of hyper -DVG, it can uh, manage the target debugging. Uh, as I uh, told before vmx uh, non-root uh, mode and vmx root mode operation the vmm itself will run in the vmx root mode uh, operation and it's not true about the guest software which runs in uh, vmx non-root operation and the, by uh, running codes uh, this is the term that you uh, probably see in uh, hyper dvg uh, documentation uh, by running codes in uh, VMX root mode, uh, we actually mean that the code is executed after a VM exit and before a VM uh, uh, resume instruction is executed. So this is the term. I will uh, tell you why we use these terms in the documentation of the hyper -DVG. And uh, by VMX non-root mode, we mean that the code is regularly executed in both kernel mode or probably in user mode. But the thing is, currently at the time of uh, recording this video, the only uh, command in HyperDVG or the only event in HyperDVG that works in VMX non-root mode is EPT hook 2 because all of the other HyperDVG events are currently running in VMX uh, root mode. So uh, <laughs> this command is generally, as I uh, mentioned it in the previous uh, sections, this command generally runs in VMX uh, non-root mode. It has a lot of uh, limitation and considerations. Uh, definitely want some S some S scripts for EPT hook two. Then we have to uh, consider some of the limitation that it has. But uh, we'll discuss this consideration later in this part. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about page tables because the de uh, demo for this part is uh, mainly about page tables. So we're going to talk about the, uh, some basic uh, concepts about paging and page table fundamentals. This is uh, not a really deep tutorial about the page tables, so it's better to uh, probably if you don't have any idea about the page tables better to have other uh, it's better to look at other uh, resources for learning page tables but uh, in brief if i want to explain page tables then on x84 in in x86 64 systems uh, there are if we, if we want to uh, address a four clue uh, byte of uh, pages, we need to have uh, 12 bits to address these areas of the memory. So in the terms of current, in the current uh, Intel paging terms, then uh, we have four uh, main uh, page tables that are named uh, PML4, PD, PT, PD, and PT. 
and each entry has eight bytes uh, and uh, each page is uh, the point each uh, page table is also uh, allocated by four kilobytes of memory and I uh, there are also other page levels like PML5 but I think generally it's not needed it's uh, I'm not sure if it's supported by the Intel or not but uh generally the, uh, the operating systems like linux and windows currently i think they don't use it and they just use four level of page tables so generally uh, in four kilobytes of uh, memory uh, we have uh, 512 entries uh, and in order to address this uh, amount this entries we need to have nine bits uh, because we need to address uh, one of the uh, one of the row uh, one of the uh, entries that, that are corresponding to the page table uh, page uh, address uh, in, in in case if we want to get the physical address of uh, from the virtual address then the highest nine bits are taken and uh, to uh get the corresponding pml4 and 3 and uh, each entry in uh uh pml4 holds uh, the physical address of the next page table which is called pdpt this is the way that we can uh, just traverse or go through the page tables to find the entry that we want. Uh, the next nine bits is also uh, used to find uh, the PDPT entry and uh, again the next uh, nine bits is used to find the PD entry uh, uh, on the PD page. So the last level of the paging uses nine uh, the uh, 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 nine bits again because we are again want we want to uh, use uh, we want to address five uh, five hundred twelve uh, entries so we need nine bits to find the right PD uh, entry on the PD uh, PT page and. Uh, the PT entry tells us the physical base address of the page uh, of the map page or uh, or if or, or or target page and if we just uh, fail in one of these uh, translation then a PF or page fault occurs because we're generally trying to uh, just uh, find the right entry so uh, uh, if we access uh, um, we access an invalid uh, page then a uh, page fault will occur and yeah this is uh, the uh, for more information you can go to the uh, go to this tutorial if i want to just briefly illustrate what i told before uh, we have something like this for a 64 bit uh, addressing uh, so uh, we generally have nine bits for uh, PML uh, four, nine bits for PDPT, uh, nine bit for PD, and nine uh, bit for PT. And uh, if we want to just uh, address, uh, because uh, all of uh, all of these ad uh, addresses will map to a four kilobyte of uh, <coughs> four kilobyte. Uh, Four kilobyte page, so we need we need twelve bits uh, to address uh, to find the exact byte of the code that we want from this four kilobyte. There are uh, in each of these page tables or in each of these entries, there are some uh, attributes that define the attribute of the target page. For example, some of the uh, uh, options uh, show that whether the page is absent or present and some of them also uh, shows whether uh, there's a, there's a, a modification uh, previously applied to this page or not which is called dirty bit there are some caching policies there are some references and there are also some 
protection bits like making them executable or writable uh, these are the things that are applied uh, in the option optional fields of the page tables and uh, uh, of course we need to have a frame number or uh, the physical address of the next page that we next level of the paging that we want to point to it in a general overview of the paging uh, we have one uh, cr tree which is the uh, which is a register and this register points to the starting point of the page tables uh, it uh, points to the address of, or the bit to the base address of pml4 pml4 uh, page uh, table so the physical address uh, of pml4 and then uh, after that uh, <clears throat> we can start by getting nine bits uh, out of the virtual address and these nine bits will be used to find the entry corresponding uh, to the address in the pml4 uh, um, page table then uh, in in the target pml4 uh, entry we have the physical address uh, of the or the base physical address of the next page table and again we get nine bits of uh, the uh, uh, or address and uh, find the corresponding entry of uh, or target address uh, the same thing happens here we again find the base address for page directory or for pd but, uh, then and again nine bits are used and this will be continued uh, till we uh, get the address of or the corresponding entry to the page table entry and in the page table entry then uh, we have 12 bits here to point to the exact byte uh, of the memory so uh, after uh, going from cr3 to pt uh, at last we have a physical address which is our actual page and they, this actual page will uh, uh we have 12 bits to point to the right at uh, right byte that we want to read or write or execute or whatever uh, of course there are also other uh uh ways of handling uh, these pages like for example sometimes the granularity for the pages are two mega uh, two megabyte bytes of data and then because of that the pt is removed so there is no pt and after uh, just using uh, pde then we have uh, 12 plus 9 uh, bits uh, of data to uh, point to the right byte that we want so the granularity of the page table might be different uh, uh, might be for example 2 megabyte might be 4 megabyte and it might be it might change based on what operating system wants to do for example uh, because some operating system wants to just manage everything better or there is a large page that uh, there is no need uh, to to it to just be uh, just use the uh, uh the fourth uh page uh, level entry so the operating system uh, decides to handle it in two megabyte granularity uh in order to find the address of uh, these uh entries uh, in hyper dvg you can use pt command uh, uh, this uh exclamation mark pt command will use to find the address the virtual address of the corresponding entries in each level of the execution so uh, you can see easily that if we want to get the uh, page table address or uh, page table entry address or entry address for this address then uh, the virtual address is <coughs> this we have pml4e uh, or pxe which is located at this location of memory and it contains um, this value again we have pdpt or uh, which is uh, which is uh, located here and contains this uh, same value with the difference in this bit 
and uh, PDE uh, again is located here. PT is also located here, and this is the value of the uh, target page table. So, uh, in other words, if uh, the address uses uh, three levels of paging, like uh, um, for example, in uh, in uh, NTOS uh, kernel or in uh, the main module of the operating system, the operating system decides to just map everything in three levels of paging. So uh, there is no PTE uh, and everything is, uh, and uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, the hyperdvg shows that PTE is a large page, so it doesn't have a PTE. Uh, here's the way uh, that we uh, find every, uh, entries in the page tables. We have a, a cool demo for uh, this uh, command uh, in this part. But uh, for now, let's just ignore it for some time and learn some uh, learn some of the uh, terms that are related to the extended page table or EPT. <laughs> EPT or extended page table is the implementation of second level uh, address translation or SLAT uh, in Intel processor and it's another layer of address translation uh, that arguments translation of the linear address. Uh, this is uh, the, the feature that makes us able to virtualize the physical memory and uh, <clears throat> when the EPT is in use by a virtual machine or by a VMM, then some of the addresses uh, uh, that normally will be treated as a physical address uh, instead uh, will be treated as a guest physical address. So it's a second level paging. That's why it's called second level paging. So these guest physical addresses then is, are translated by traversing again uh, a set of EPT page tables uh, to produce the the actual uh, physical address that that is used to access the memory. Uh, EPT translation uh, is exactly the same as regular page tables uh, translation, and but there are some minor differences uh, in in the architecture of the EPT. So in regular paging, uh, the processor translates a virtual address to physical address, but in EPT translation. Uh, the guest virtual address, if we want to get uh, the guest virtual address and convert it to the host physical address. This is uh, why uh, EPT is used. So in, in general term is the same as the previous page tables, uh, the, the, the physical uh, address or the starting point of the uh, EPT page tables is located in uh, VMCS. This is uh, exactly the same thing. Hap uh, the same thing uh, was uh, in for regular page tables var was in CR3, but in EPT translation, it's uh, located in VMCS. And as you can see, these entries are uh, used uh, based on the virtual address that is used. These entries are also used uh, to uh, to translate to the actual physical address. And uh, the thing is, it's not virtual address. I think I just tell it by mistake that it's a virtual address. It's not virtual address anymore. The guest physical address that is translated by the regular page tables are no formed in a way that is translatable uh, as the guest physical address is translatable to the host physical address. So this is the purpose why we need uh, EPT. Now let's see some of the terms about physical memory. Uh, in physical memory, most of the commands that are used for uh, physical memory are the same, same commands that are used for virtual memory. Uh, but there are one exclamation mark at the start of the command, which shows that it's it's uh, for, used for uh, <laughs> physical addresses, 
if we want to convert a virtual address to physical address, then we use exclamation mark uh, VA to PA and uh, for converting physical address to virtual address, then we use PA to VA. Uh, as you can see here, we uh, convert, uh, we convert, uh, NTX allocate pool with tag uh, from virtual address to physical address and here is the corresponding physical address and if we want to just see this uh, the memory at uh, the memory at the virtual address located by X allocate pool with tag then uh, the content of memory is this uh, while if we want to do the do the same thing, but uh, this time with a physical address, then we use an exclamation mark or a bang at the start of the command, and then we use a physical uh, address. And as you can see, the same content uh, is provided by the hyper DVG uh, because in memory, um, these two locations are the same. And uh, another thing is, as you can see here, uh, those uh, addresses that uh, that are corresponding to physical addresses uh, start with a sharp sign. If uh, we want to convert uh, a physical address to a virtual address, then we can use uh, PA to VA and uh, converting it uh, gives us the uh, actual uh, virtual address. And as you can see, this address is the same as this address here let's uh, see some of the basic terms or basic commands that we need to read or search or write or disassemble memory um, from physical address this is this is exactly the same as virtual address so uh, in uh, because we want to read the memory then we have uh, again we have uh, db for write, uh, reading in byte format uh, dc or uh, dd uh, for reading in d word format and dq for reading it in uh, q word format so here is the commands uh, where we want to read uh, this location of the memory from physical address in byte format in d word format and finally in q word format and again the same thing happens for the writing to the physical memory so uh <laughs> for writing to the physical memory memory uh we use the same commands uh, as a uh, virtual address but we add this exclamation mark or this bang uh, and if we want to edit uh, memory uh, in uh, uh, byte format then uh, we use eb uh, in uh, dword format then we use the uh, then we use ed uh, as you can see, the memory address is also modified here when 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 we try to modify it. And if we want to uh, uh, modify it in Q word format, then again we use EQ. The, the same is uh, the same the same things is also true about searching memory. All of the search um, searching commands that apply to Virtual addresses are also applied to the physical addresses. If we want to just search for a pattern of bytes uh, for uh, from this address, uh, we want to search for forty-eight and eighty-nine, uh, and the size of the search is uh, one hundred bytes. So uh, this command will search and uh, gives us the addresses, uh, the physical addresses that uh has this pattern so these are the addresses uh, the same thing all is also applied to the uh u or uh unassemble or disassemble command or u2 uh if you want to disassemble a physical address you can use uh u or exclamation mark u with the corresponding address and if you want to uh, translate it uh, with the uh, third two bit interpretation then uh, you can use uh, u2
Okay, now let's go to a demo in which we want to modify the attributes of a page table. Uh, I uh, made an example here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the example here is a simple C command that tries to run a shell code. Uh, the shell code uh, tries to find the address of uh, the address of uh, a message box and show the message box of HyperDVG. Uh, you can see that it's disassembled here. Of course, the explanation of the shell code is uh, out of concept, uh, out of scope of this tutorial. But generally, if you are just uh, watching the uh, video about HyperDVG, then probably you know the basics that how they uh, try how this shell code works how it tries to get the uh, <clears throat> addresses and how it finally executes uh, the uh, <clears throat> actual message box uh, and shows the message box so i'm gonna just run it here and as you can see that it says the address of allocated buffer is located here and the process id is here and uh, then it, uh, whenever we press one key to continue uh, the execution then you can see that just uh, an exception is thrown because uh, if i want to explain it uh, Generally, the page that we allocated here is not executable, it's just readable and writable, so the shellcode cannot be executed. But if, we, uh, if I compile it uh, with uh, execute permission uh, and allocate a, a page execute read write uh, out of it, so uh, generally the shellcode should be executed and we should reach to the uh last part of the program that said the program executed successfully so let's try to run it again i try to press uh, uh enter and uh, you can see that uh, the, the the message is shown here and it said uh, hyper dvg the, the message that after this shell code is called hyper dvg and then the program successfully executes and exits. So uh, this is the example uh, that I can think of uh, just using and modifying the memory. So um, this is the case. So let's just re return to the base, the, to the first state where the uh, program is not executable. Uh, where the memory address is not executable, so we see an exception. I want to just try to modify the page table that corresponds to uh, making this uh, page not executable, because as you know, uh, whenever the operating system wants to uh, <clears throat> uh, wants to flag some pages as non-executable it should configure the processor or the page table of the processor it's the responsibility of the processor to find uh, to uh, not fetch instructions from the page tables that are marked as non uh, not executable so again i go and run a vmware workstation uh, We go to the snapshot. Uh, another thing is that this shell code, uh, generally speaking, running a shell code uh, or using virtual alloc or uh, running shell code, uh, some of the antiviruses might flag this behavior. So you can uh, turn off the hyper the antivirus and test it, or you can also try to understand the shell code and th this is just uh, most of the time considered malicious in terms of hypervisors so i try to disable my antivirus in the target system before running this code
let's uh, run hyper dbg I, I i you can use both uh how you can run hyper dbg in both uh debugger mode and vmm mode but i prefer to run it in in the uh, local debugging or vmi mode uh, generally if i want to execute this uh, then you can see uh that it shows the address that the allocated buffer address and the process ID and if I press the key then nothing happens because uh, the application just crashed and uh, <laughs> the message box is not shown here so if I try to run it again again the message box won't be shown uh, so let's uh, again run uh, hyper dbg connect to the debugger mode uh, connect to the vmi mode sorry yeah um, so if we want to see the physical addresses that correspond to this process then i, I want to use uh, va to pa because this is a virtual address then but the thing is that this address is invalid because we are in the con context of the hyper division process so we need to uh, we need to just make sure about uh, to, to set the actual uh, process id of the target process as you can see here we can also specify the process id so i just try to add the process id to the previous command and you can see that we can we can uh now see the actual physical address so, uh, generally uh, if we want to see the memory then here is the memory that corresponds to this address uh, and if we want to uh, just modify it then we can use uh, this eb command and modify it to like some nopes and again see the memory and you can see that it's here it's modified but generally we are not trying to destroy the shell code so uh, let's try to turn it to its first step and um, yeah it remains unfixed so now what we're gonna do here is we want to use pte command to find the actual uh, the actual page table address uh, again we need to specify uh, the process id because we are in the context of the hyper dbg uh, process so i use the pte command and here it is here we can see that the virtual address is uh, f8 and this address and uh, this is the different levels of the page tables and all of them are located here and if you want to just simply read from these uh, virtual addresses all of them are in virtual address form then it's not possible because the address is not valid again in the con context of the hyper dvg but so we should also switch the page table of another process is not valid sometimes or in some pages uh, are not valid in the con context of another process so we use the uh, process id of the target process and you can see that this process is all the, the address is valid and we, we see the value let's see some of the uh, I, I searched page tables from uh, <clears throat> intel processors and this is a very basic uh, uh, 
like view of the page tables in interprocessors. We have CR3 here and each entry is also uh, whenever the entry is present, then uh, <clears throat> these uh, addresses are used. If you want to know more about these uh, bits and how it how these bits work, then you can see. Uh, then you can uh, read Intel software de uh, development manual, software developer manual, SDM. The first bit, uh, is, the second bit actually is uh, about read and write. The, another bit is about user mode or supervisor mode. And there are also other attributes, but uh, and uh, this is the, the page frame or the physical address of the next page table. So we're generally not interested in, uh, in, in not interested in these bits, but the last bit or uh the the 64th bit uh or uh if we want to start from zero then it's 63 uh, then the last bit uh is uh xd or executable execute disable sometimes also called nx or not executable bit so this is the bit which uh, we want to modify it because if we modify this bit then the page table become becomes uh, readable uh, becomes executable so this is the bit that disables the execution and uh, processor knows the intel processor uh, knows that this page is flagged as non executable and won't fetch instruction from this target page but if we just try to manipulate this bit then we we will uh, we are able to run or target uh, shellcode so uh, just try to return to the hyper dvg uh I, I try to just remove and see the use the pt command again uh this is the value of pt this is the value of pte uh, entry so generally speaking we see that the last bit of this uh, page table is uh, marked as zero it means that execute uh, disable is not here so uh, if i want to just simply convert this hex value to binary value you, you will see that uh, there is no prevention for uh, executable because this page uh, this bit is zero means that this page is allowed to be executed so we are not in interested in this entry Again, let's return to the VM and see another N3. The same thing also happens here. Again, the last uh, bit or the 64th bit uh, is not set. So it, this page also allows the execution of uh, the target shell code. The same thing also happens in PDE. Let me check it again. Uh, again this last bit is not set uh, but if we want to if we if re we return to the last entry uh, which is pt i i i think i just uh, tell that it's like uh from top to down the 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 first uh, entry was pml4e the second was pdpt and the uh, third one was pde but the last one that points to a four kilobyte uh, of granularity is PTE. So we try to just uh, see uh, the same value here. As you can see, uh, <laughs> this address, uh, uh the last bit or the nx bit or xd bit this is the this target bit so uh, the last bit here is set so we need to just disable this bit or set it to zero then the page table becomes uh, executable and instruction fetch are also allowed so i just try to co copy uh, this binary number and want to convert it to the hex uh then here's the value 
but I need to modify the last bit and put a zero here. And then we have this hex number. Okay, I will copy this hex value, return to the VM, and try to uh, edit a keyboard of data located at here. And of course, in the process ID of here and uh, yeah it should be fine so let's try to modify it and again see the uh, the pt of the address and here you can see it's modified now uh, now the page table structure is the modified and uh, we unset the executable the executable execute disable bit so no the instruction fetch should be allowed from this uh, location of memory I, I will return to the process and press some keys um here and yeah here you can see that uh hyper dvg is executed and so so generally uh, speaking is uh now now the page uh, instruction which is allowed so uh we bypass the operating system uh considerations for making this page not executable and uh, run uh, or uh, target uh so this was an example to just illustrate how we can use HyperDVG to modify different structures in uh, different different paging structures, different memory structures. That you can do the same thing with other debuggers like WinDVG. It's just it was just an example. So let's just return to the slides. 